Hi, I'm Tiffany Patlin, host of the Tiffany Talks Health and Wellness Podcast, where I discuss tools, tips, and techniques to heal your mind, body, and soul. I am on a godly mission to heal the world. Hey everybody, it's me, Tiffany Patlin, and I know normally I do my podcast live at 11 o'clock, but we had a cancellation today and, you know, I want to be respectful of this person because they weren't feeling well, you know, and health, health comes first. (laughs) So I really wanted to share something with you today that's really important. The topic is all about letting it out, okay? So this goes for anybody that has experienced any type of trauma, abuse, or even just mistreatment. A lot of times we don't even realize that the way that we've been treated is actually considered abuse. So I'm pulling this out from my book. This is an exercise from my book in chapter four. So that's the beginning of chapter five. This is, I'm sorry, which one is it? This one right here is chapter five. For those that are watching on replay, um, I have this here on Facebook and I'm just showing off my book. Um, But this exercise, let it out, is at the end of chapter four for those that do have the book. And I wanted to read this to you because it's really, really important. And then I'll share with you my experience with it. So Emily R. DeWorkin, a senior fellow at the University of Washington School of Medicine in Seattle, studies how the social interactions of trauma survivors can affect their recovery. She was also the lead author of a paper published in the journal Clinical Psychology Review in 2017 that looked through more than 100,000 case studies conducted in the last 50 years and found nearly 200 relevant ones on the relationship between sexual assault and mental health to analyze. She states, in my clinical work, a woman came to me with her story of sexual assault. The first time she was told it, she told it, she was crying. By the fourth time, she was almost yawning. Her story is not one that has power over her anymore. She has a control over going to have her life altered. Something I would like you to do if you have been holding on to suppressed emotions from a sexual assault incident is to write about it. Feel free to write or type it. Don't worry about someone else reading or learning this information. You are doing this exercise to help you to release your suppressed emotions. You have the option to burn this and release this. After you have initially gotten your story out, I would urge you to take the next steps to speak out about your incident. Take however small or large step that you need. Try practicing telling your story by auto-recording it. Remember that healing is not a race. We each have our own unique journey. The only way to relieve your pain is through it and at a pace that works for you. So I want to share with you that I, I did this and I didn't do it over sexual assault. I actually did this in, in relation to my mother. And the reason why I did that is because when it comes to my mother, I love her dearly. I miss her so much. Um, when it comes to her, that's where I feel like a lot of my pain was coming from. A lot of the things that I experienced was things that she did, things that she didn't do. So I feel like there was a lot of pain I was holding on to there. And that's why I chose to do this let it out release ritual um, for my mother. And I opted to type it out because I'm a very fast typer and I had a lot to say. I spoke about I didn't speak, you know, I typed about things that I remembered that she did, things that she didn't do for me, the emotions, how she made me feel. Um, I would say things almost as I was, as if I was talking to her directly. Now, this letter, this memo, whatever you want to call it, 
It does not need to make sense. You do not need to go back in. It is, that's not what it's for. Just like they tell you to do like a brain dump, like before you go to bed, so that way your thoughts are not, you know, preventing you from sleeping. I would say this is an emotional dump because when we experience things, an event, an episode, and it causes us to have negative emotions, if we do not make space to honor that, those emotions, to set them free, they will become suppressed, stored within our subconscious. And then it will color everything that we do. It will color what we, how we think, how we speak, how we react to everyday situations, how we parent, the way we operate in a relationship, the way we are at work, how we interact with other people. It affects literally everything that we do. That is the reason why it's important for us to identify root causes of our symptoms that we're having perhaps today, because then we can trace it back to the moment in time, the incident, the episode, whatever it was that we were experiencing that caused us to have these emotions. And what happens when we don't honor and release our emotions, that's when they manifest into symptoms of anxiety disorder, depression, PTSD, OCD, depending on whatever trauma it is that you experienced. It's all different and it's all unique because two, pe two people can experience the same thing and they can both respond to it differently. One person may honor their emotions and set them free and it may that incident does not bother them. It's not affecting them in their life. It's not a weight that's preventing them from rising up in their life. <clears throat> But the other person <clears throat> that does not do the healing work, because maybe they were never taught how, maybe they just didn't know, maybe they weren't allowed to honor their emotions, maybe they weren't allowed to cry it out, they weren't allowed to yell it out, they just weren't allowed to honor their emotions. So the only thing that they do was suppress them, was to bury them. So that they've probably been carrying them for who knows how long. And if something like that happens at a young age, and we never release these emotions, then it's like you're wearing a backpack and I don't know, just imagine a brick, a brick, and it has neglect on it because you were neglected when you needed attention, affection, whatever you needed. So neglect, that brick is going to go into your bag and any other experiences that you have for the rest of your life, every day you can have an experience. And if it's a traumatic experience and you don't honor and release your emotions, they'll become trapped. And literally, you're just putting more bricks into your own backpack. And what happens? It's going to get heavier. No matter what you do in life, you're going to be carrying that backpack. And think about it. It's not going to, it's going to be painful because it's heavy. It's not good. It doesn't make you feel good. And a lot of us, when we don't feel good, <clears throat> we naturally get grouchy. If we're, we get hangry, if we haven't eaten, you know, we tend to get grouchy. Uh, if we're uncomfortable and cold, we can get grouchy. If we're in pain, especially if it's constant pain and it doesn't let up, we can get grouchy, you know? And this is important because if you have any suppressed emotions inside, it's going to affect everything that you do. So it's this is such an important exercise. And I really, really encourage all of you, if there, if you know, if you know for a fact that there's somebody in your life that you harbor anger for or somebody that you refuse to forgive, you're saying yes to wearing a backpack full of bricks. Why would we do that? Why would you do that? If you take it off or if you start, you know, honing in on your healing and taking out brick by brick, the next thing you know, you feel lighter. And I, I can attest to this because when I did that emotional dump with my mother, it was like, the next day it felt like somebody did surgery in my heart space. That is the best way I could describe it. I literally felt lighter. It really did feel like if I took off something that I was carrying that was super duper heavy. And it wasn't just one incident. Like this was everything that I could think about my mother from the day that I was born that I can recall, you know, as far back as I can remember. You name it, I wrote it down. I got rid of all of it. But I also honored my erosion. My I also honored my emotions, which entailed a lot of crying, allowing myself to feel the hurt, the pain, the neglect, 
the unworthiness, the shame, all of those emotions that I carried for so many years. And you guys, I'm going to be 40 this year. That is a long time. And I did this, what, a couple years ago. So what, 38 something, 37 years. That is way too long. And I don't want you guys out there, whether you're in your 50s or whether you're in your 20s, I don't want you to carry this pain with you anymore because you don't have to. You do not have to carry pain from other people's poor choices. It's not ours to carry. We don't deserve to carry that. We deserve to honor those. And that can look different depending on the situation. Maybe we need to cry. Maybe we need to scream in a pillow. Maybe we need to beat the crap out of a punching bag. Maybe we need to go out to the mountains and scream bloody murder for an hour straight. Whatever that is, as long as it's not hurting another person and it's healthy and it's not hurting you or another person, it's not causing any harm, but you're getting it out, then it's a healthy thing to do. Find out what that is for you. Every single time something happens, just please do not bury it. That is like the worst thing that we can do. So no matter where you're at in your life, find something that person that you won't forgive, this or that, that person that hurt you a billion years ago that you're still holding on to, get it out, let it out, let it out. And the way that you can do that is just, if you're a typer, pull up your computer, pull up a Word document, a Google Doc, and just start typing. Just let it out. If you're a writer, a journaling expert, you know, that's your thing. Get a pen, get a journal, sit in a quiet place, play some healing music, if you will, high vibrational healing music. You can find that easily on YouTube just by typing that in and write, just write, my friend, write, let it all out. And you might notice that while you're writing, something else might pop up for you. Don't ignore that. Write it out. Even if it doesn't have to do with that topic, write it out. Obviously, there's a relationship there. Otherwise, it would not have come up for you at that moment. So when you have all of these thoughts, memories, write it out so you can let it out. And the best way to do that, I've mentioned before in other videos, what I did, I just had my husband there and I asked him if he'd be willing to read this with me. It was really, really hard for me to do. And I couldn't tell you why. Um, As I was typing it, you know, I was crying because I was remembering these things, but I wasn't fully um, honoring my emotions. It wasn't until we went into our little bathroom because I wanted to be alone with my husband and burn it this lovely in the toilet. That's why we were scrunched up in our bathroom. And I believe it was around winter time too. And, you know, I have three kids and I didn't want them around. So this was like our way of getting privacy. So I'm sitting this little thing. My husband's literally sitting in front of me on the toilet, you know, because it's such a small bathroom. And I'm sitting there and he's just like looking at me like, okay, so how does this work? What am I doing? What are you doing? And I was just sitting there. I was sitting there probably look, I looked very sad. I, I was not happy. I was very, very distraught. And I was sitting there with the, the papers. It was several papers and they were folded in my back pocket. And he's asking me, okay, so how do we do this? What? And he goes, where is it? Where's your letter? And I was like, it's in my back pocket. He's like, okay. And he was so patient with me. I'm so grateful that he was so patient with me. So make sure that if you have one person with you, that they are very, very patient. So very slowly, I reached to my back pocket and I pulled it out took me another couple minutes to open it. it. took me another couple more minutes to read it. I had to mentally prepare myself because I was serious. I wanted this to work and I wanted to let this stuff out. So I prepared myself mentally, physically, emotionally, you name it, spiritually, in all the ways that I knew how. And I started reading my letter. And I allowed myself to feel every single emotion. I did not hold back. I ugly cried. I had snot everywhere. It wasn't pretty, was not meant to be. It was all about honoring my emotions, remembering those hurtful moments in my life that were attached to my mother and letting myself feel the pain. That's called honoring your emotions, allowing yourself to feel those feelings that you didn't allow yourself to feel at the time. And that's what I did through everything and all the things that I said and that I remembered. And I just, I felt the pain and I cried and I kept reading 
and I kept crying. And it just kept going for several pages. I can only imagine what my poor husband might have been thinking just sitting there, looking at the wife whom he married, who he loves, the mother of his children, talk about all these horrific things that her mother did and didn't do, how her mother hurt her, you know? And it's so it's really, really important that the person that you choose to be with you is somebody that you trust, somebody that is level-headed, somebody that will give you positive, good feedback, advice about anything, somebody that you know will be patient with you, somebody that's not going to tell you negative things. You know, you're on your healing journey. So that's why one of the other um, tips uh, for your healing journey that I recommend is to purge and renew your inner circle because there can be people in our lives who we, we may love and we may care about, but they may just not be healthy mentally. And therefore, they can be very toxic in their behaviors and their choice of words and in how they support you. And that's why it's really important. It's very, very, very important to make sure that the person that you have with you to read this out loud is somebody that you can trust that's going to be there for you and not discourage you or lead you down a negative path. A lot of times when people are experiencing trauma or pain, they don't want to see other people get help or be better because they want someone to stay down there with them. It's almost like drinking. People who refuse to refer to themselves as an alcoholic are really all about getting other people around them to drink. Do you want to drink? Would you like a drink? Drink, 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 drink. Yay, so we can all drink. It kind of gives them an excuse to drink. Not that they need one, but it's it's a helpful thing. It's something that they do. Um, I'm guilty of that. And, um, you know, but I digress. So uh, I just want to get back to this about letting things go. And if you're somebody who feels a pretty solid life, I don't think there's really anything that I need to clean. Um, that may be true for you. And if that is, that is incredible. That is awesome. But I would still encourage you to create a timeline of your life, a personal timeline of your life. And that is actually another exercise that I have here in my book. I don't recall which page that is on, um, but there is another exercise exercise to do that. And I figured that out just by writing my book, because when I wrote my book, I literally had to create a timeline of my life from as far back as I can remember. And it was important for me to include everything in there in chronological order. So I had to think very deeply and go back in time and think about things. And at then I didn't know that as things came up for me, I should journal them and write them down because those were points that I could heal from. I didn't know that at the time, but I do now because I went through it. And that's why I have that in my book as an exercise because just simply creating a personal timeline of your life, the things that pop up for you could be happy memories, but the other memories that could pop up for you are the suppressed emotions that are buried inside of you. Our body gives us clues every day and we just don't acknowledge them because we were never taught. We don't know that. But if there's a memory and it pops up for you, you know, a trigger or a flashback, those are all your ways that your body is cluing you in to a memory or an incident, an episode that you experienced that, you know, wants to heal. Your body wants to heal that part of you. Your body wants to get rid of that. And a lot of times, you know, we find solace in, in you know, alcohol or drugs or medications, anything that'll numb it, anything that'll just stop it, right? But the true way to heal is to purge that, to get it out of your body, to get it out of your system. You know, people have um, mental health symptoms, people have physical chronic ailments, and people are also detached spiritually. And all of this, people, all of this can be attributed to past trauma. So I encourage you, before you just write this off and say, oh, it's due to uh, my genes. Before you say, I'm fine because I'm taking medications. Before you say, that's not true, it doesn't work. I encourage you to try it. Create a timeline of your life. Do it for you. Don't do it for me. You're, I can't watch you. I'm not there with you. I don't know if you're doing it or not. Do it for yourself. You owe it to yourself. Why? Because you deserve to live your very best life. And we can't do that when we're still carrying unhealed trauma inside of us. So no matter where you are, whether you think you've experienced trauma or not, I still encourage you, write a timeline of your life from as far back as you can remember. Some people do this in a day. Some people will take a week. It's really, there's really no set timeline. It's for you. 
And, you know, maybe you do a lot in a day and then maybe the next day you have a flashback or a memory. Make sure you include that on your timeline because they all mean something. They all matter and they can help you identify other areas. Like it's just going to be like light bulb, light bulb, light bulb. At least that's the way it was for me. And still, even still today, things are, I connect dots and I'm like, wow, wow. it's just so fascinating. It's like my new favorite thing to do because healing is such a beautiful thing. And just knowing that this stuff really works, that we have the power to, you know, heal ourselves. It's incredible. And that's why I am using my newfound voice to share with you guys what works And some people might not like to do that. There's other ways that you can heal. And if you want to learn about that, I encourage you get my book, Unlocking Your Ability to Heal. You can purchase this on Amazon. Um, There's also the ebook, or you can uh, purchase a signed copy by me by visiting my website at unlockingyourabilitytoheal.com. And I wanted to share something for those of you that are local. Uh, If you are local to Utah, I am going to, I have it in my mind to start the process of teaching how to unlock your ability to heal through a live event, a full day live event. Um, That's what I have so far. It would be on a Saturday. It'd be maybe a full eight hours and it would touch on uh, pretty much everything in this book and other things that I have continued to learn up until this date. Um, And it would basically help you with your mental health, your physical health, Remember your fitness and your spirituality, because I truly believe that when we focus every day in those three areas, that's when we bring our human body into alignment and we can't not help but to just experience the natural side effects, which are healing and happiness in all areas of your life. And I am living proof of that. So if I'm not enough proof, by all means, read my book. I talk about all the things that happened to me, what I experienced, all of the symptoms, and what I did to come out on the other side. It didn't feel right to me to just keep this to myself. Why? Because I knew. I knew. I, I know. And it breaks my heart. But I know that there's a lot of people out there that are suffering. I know that there's young people that are committing suicide. I know there's a lot of people that are still self-harming and cutting themselves all because of the poor choices that someone else made. And you do not deserve that. But I know what it's like. I've been there. I know what it's like to be wandering the streets as a young teenager at 14 years old, wondering why my mom and dad are not there taking care of me. Why? Why? You know, why Why am I sitting on the cold bathroom floor holding myself? Because... I was just raped by my cousin. Why? Why am I starving and hungry on the street? Why don't I have food? Why don't I have a warm bed to sleep in? Why? What did I do to deserve this? That's the thing. Things don't happen necessarily because we deserve it. It happens because evil exists in this world. Again, that does not mean that we deserve to hold on to pain from somebody else's poor choices, evil choices. That was their choice. Let them deal with that. We have the opportunity to decide what we want to do with what they did to us. We have emotions from that. Let us honor them. Let us feel them. But then do the most important part, and that's release them. Release it. You can do that through forgiveness. Understand that that person... They must have been raped themselves. They must have been mistreated themselves. They must have this. They must have that. Does it make it right? Oh, heck no. But it helps you understand why people do what they do. It has nothing to do with you. It has to do with something that they are struggling with in their own past. Could be mentally, could be physically, could be spiritually. You never know what type of abuse another person has endured unless they've shared it with you. And what about the stuff that they haven't shared with you? So this is also another reason why I I encourage people, if you are a single person, 
I strongly, strongly, strongly encourage you to not get into a relationship with anybody until you have gone through so much healing for yourself. Because something I've learned the hard way is that when we're carrying a lot of trauma and pain and hurt, a lot of negativity, you know, all the things, we tend to attract another person that is at that same level in life as us. And I wouldn't, let's just say that that's not something I want for my own sons. I want my son to be able to find another woman that is healthy minded, that is, that knows and understands nutrition, that is physically fit because they understand that, you know, a stagnant body promotes disease. Somebody who knows their identity in Christ, somebody who knows who they are, they live for God, they know that maybe they've experienced abuse in their past, but they've done the healing work, they've done the process, they know. Um, that's something that I really want for my children. Um, so I just really encourage you to heal yourself so that way you can attract somebody else that is healthy, healthy minded, healthy physically, and healthy spiritually. So you two can come together, not to complete each other, you know, not to become two half of people and be whole. No, but for two whole, happy, healthy people to come together and share a life together. Because I really believe that's what life is all about. You know, we're always going to have experiences. And just because you've gone through so much healing does not mean that you're never going to experience something angry or sad or negative. It doesn't mean that you're never going to be mistreated. It doesn't mean that you're not going to experience a type of abuse of some sort. It doesn't mean that. What it does mean is that when you go through healing, when things do happen, you understand and you know that people do things based on the information that they have, based on the way that they were treated, based on how they were abused. You understand that you only want to associate with a certain type of people because you are setting healthy boundaries for yourself. You know not to put yourself in certain situations that are going to create drama. Like you just know things. And when things happen, you know that it's not yours to carry. So you tend to see things differently. You react to everyday situations in a healthier way. Your first reaction isn't always anger and you're not always triggered and you're not always having flashbacks. In fact, I, as several other people in this world, have experienced um, lesser symptoms of mental illness. I suffered from debilitating anxiety disorder. I would never in a million years do a video like this because I was terrified of what? the lie that I should be scared of everything, you know, probably stemmed from my past being hurt and abused and tossed around. You know what I mean? Like it makes sense, but I no longer feel that way. I feel brave. I know my voice matters. Hence this podcast, Tiffany Talks. This is for the world. This is for you. Now just imagine what you could do with your life once you start your healing journey and you get to that healthy space. Imagine what your life can be like. Imagine what you're going to do. I'm sure you have dreams. Imagine a life where you are actually fulfilling your dreams. You can do this and it can be yours. So I encourage you, start today. Start, on, start this weekend, but just don't start as soon as you can and start purging, start writing, start typing all of the pain because you do not deserve to carry it a moment longer. So that is it for me for today's topic to just let it go. And um, I just want to wish you all so much love, so much health and just so much healing. And if you need any help, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. You can learn more about how I help other people heal and how to reach me just by going to my website at tiffanypatlin.com. Sending love and light to you all. Bye now.